Vigar is a high burst damage mage champion in League of Legends. In, in this guide, I'll be going over the many pros and cons of the champion, as well as some builds and skill orders that can be used to best optimize his abilities. What's black and blue and is about to show you the definition of pain? Vigar, the tiny master of evil, is known to have some of the highest burst damage in the game after level 6 through the use of his combo that I will describe later in the guide. His area of effect crowd control, his ability to farm extra ability power, and his ultimate that scales off of the target's ability power means that Vigar has one of the strongest late games of any mage in League of Legends. But unfortunately, a combination of these things, as well as the fact that he is very dependent on his ultimate, result in him having a fairly weak early game. Vigar is also an excellent roamer thanks to his ability to push his lane and then gank other lanes and use his air of effect crowd control and high damage to secure a number of kills. <laughs> Vigar's passive is Equilibrium. Equilibrium means that the more mana Vigar has used up, the faster it will regen. This ability is great for sustaining mana in lane and farming your Q. Vigar's Q is Baleful Strike. Baleful Strike is a single target nuke that deals large amounts of magic damage on a fairly short cooldown with fairly low mana costs. This ability also has a passive effect, where if Vagar last hits a minion with it, he will permanently gain plus one ability power for the remainder of the game. He also gains five ability power every time he kills an enemy champion with any form of damage. This is Vigar's bread and butter ability, and it should be farmed to the max to give Vigar as strong a late game as possible. Vigar's W is Dark Matter. After the spell is cast, there will be a 1.2 second long animation, and then a large area of effect nuke will strike the ground where the ability was cast. This ability is Vigar's highest damage spell outside of his ultimate, but is very hard to land due to the long animation, and so should be used in conjunction with his E for maximum effect. This ability also grants vision at the spot where it is cast, and so can be used as a great tool for scouting bushes when you are unsure of the enemy's position. Vigar's E is Event Horizon. When cast to target location, a circular wall will be summoned for 3 seconds, and any enemies that walk into this wall will be stunned. This stun allows you to easily land your Dark Matter and set up your combo. Vigar's ultimate is Primordial Burst. This ability has 500 base damage at level 3, a 1.2 ability power scaling, as well as 80% of the target's ability power. This makes it one of the hardest hitting nukes in the entire game, and gives Vigar bags of kill potential at level 6 onwards, especially against AP casters. You deny the darkness in your soul! You deny your power! There are a number of different item choices on Vigar in the early game that are all viable. These could include getting a number of Doran's rings, uh, getting some gold ten items, or getting a chalice of harmony. What I tend to do is I build a cage's lucky pick. This is a must build in every single game for Vigar because it builds into a DFG, which you definitely need, and I'll explain why later. I also often build a Philosopher's Stone or a Heart of Gold. The Philosopher's Stone gives you much need sustain in lane. You will give you health regen to help you deal with harass, as well as mana regen, which will increase the effectiveness of your passive. The Heart of Gold gives you health, which is good on Vigar because he's incredibly squishy. A Chalice of Harmony is also another option on Vigar. It gives mana regen and is, has much a similar effect as your passive. Um, I don't tend to build this, but it is a good option if you're being harassed with abilities because of the magic resist that it gives. Something that I never build on Vigar, but I often see people build, is a tier of the Goddess. Um, I don't feel that the stats this gives Vigar are that valuable, because you can get similar things with cheaper items that are much greater late game. I also don't like an Archangel staff on Vigar, because it doesn't give any sort of survivability and is only raw damage, which is nice, but is not quite what you need. There are a number of different items that many Vigars will get every single game, but I feel that there are two that stand out above the rest that any Vigar should be getting as quickly as possible, and those two items are the Deathfire Grasp and the Rabadon's Death Cap. The Deathfire Grasp is the item that should be the core that every single Vigar build is built around. The active ability of the Deathfire Grasp 
is core to Vigar's combo, and is what gives him the ability to kill somebody from full health with one combo. For those of you that don't know, the active on a Deathfire Grasp is a large magic damage nuke that deals 25% of the target's current health, plus 4% of their health for every 100 ability power that you have. I have often seen Vigar's have this active deal over 50% of the target's current health, meaning that they can kill a target with merely this and their ultimate, leaving the rest of their abilities available to kill the rest of the team. I feel that the reason that you would buy Rabadon's death cap on Vigar is fairly self-explanatory, since it gives the most ability power out of any single item in the game, as well as a 35% increase on any other ability power that you have, and that includes the ability power that you farm from your Q. So what I'm going to talk about now is which order you should buy these items in. I find that you can build these either way around and you will still be dealing tons of damage to anybody that you come across. But I feel that if you are doing well in the game and you have a lot of money saved up, instead of building a death by a grasp, perhaps buy a needlessly large rod and turn it into a Rabadon's, or buy a needlessly large rod and then finish your death by a grasp. But if you're struggling in the game, then I'd recommend buying a death by a grasp first for the increased cooldown reduction, making it easier to save yourself from ganks, as well as the active immediately increasing your damage significantly. Something that I forgot to mention is that you need to buy Boots of Speed on Vigar at some point in the early game, usually as your very first starting item. Um, and at this point in the game, you should be looking to upgrade these into what will most likely be Sorcerer's Shoes to give you that extra magic pen to increase your burst damage. In the late game, almost any ability power item is a possibility for Vigar, so I think it would be more convenient right now for me to tell you what not to buy. There are a few items that don't really synchronise with Vigar's skill set, and the first one of these that I'm going to be talking about is the Will of the Ancients. The Will of the Ancients gives an okay amount of ability power, about the same as any other AP item, but the main reason people build it is the spell vamp. However, with Vigar, you're main damage comes from the one combo that's going to kill one person and you, pr you should be using this as close to the start of the fight as possible meaning that when you use it you'll most likely be at full health because if you wait for the fight to develop then chances are you'll be focused down and killed before you have a chance to use it so the spell vamp's really quite useless because you'll probably be at full health and you use the combo anyway and even if the other team does manage to jump onto you the spell vamp probably won't keep you alive for much longer because you're so squishy The next item that I'm going to recommend you don't buy is the Lich Bane. This item gives an alright amount of ability power, some small amount of magic resist, and some mana, all of which is pretty good on Vega. However, the main reason you'd buy this item over anything else is it's passive. This item is expensive, and without this passive, it's not even close to worth it. And the passive on this item is that once you use an ability, your next auto attack will deal all of your ability power as physical damage. Okay? which is fine, but on Vigar you're not going to be auto-attacking much because your auto-attack animation is very slow and it's just not its not optimal in a fight for you to be auto-attacking. If you're not casting an ability on someone, you want to be sitting in the back waiting for your cooldowns to come up again so that you can be useful in the fight. If you're stood at the front auto-attacking, you're going to die very quickly. Apart from these two items, basically any other ability power item can be built on Vigar in the late game, and you should build entirely situationally around the game. For example, if they have heavy um, uh, heavy attack damage, you should build a Zonya's Hourglass. If they have heavy magic damage, perhaps an Abyssal Scepter or an Athene's Unholy Grail. However, the one thing that I will say is that in almost every single Vigar game that you play, at least one or two people on the enemy team will stack magic resist to counter you hard, and for this reason alone, I would highly recommend building a Void Staff as possibly your third major item, or perhaps later on in your build if you don't feel that it's necessary at that point in time, but I would definitely recommend buying one at some point in the game. Vigar's combo is possibly the most devastating sequence of moves in the entire game of League of Legends. It's very easy to do, and I will explain it to you now. When you are doing the combo, you always want to open with your stun. Once you have them stunned, this makes it easier to land your W, so use the W second. After this, you want to use your Deathfire Grasp. The DFG takes away a 
percentage of their current health. So the higher their health, the more damage it will do. So you want this to hit them first. You can then use your Q and your R in either order, and this will normally be enough to kill any squishy champion and possibly a tankier champion. However, you have to keep in mind that if your W is not in range and you have to walk up to use it, then they could miss it because they could come unstunned before it reaches them. And if they have tenacity, they will get out of the stun before the W lands. So you have to be very quick when pressing the buttons, which is why smart casting on Vigar is always a good idea. The perfect type of mid laner to pick Vigar against is A. Squishy and B lacks mobility to dodge your stuns. This p this type of mid laner includes Karthus, Cassiopeia, or Brand. However, you do have to be very careful against mages that have high damage outputs and hard CC because you're one of the squishiest mages in the entire game and you yourself lack mobility so you could fall prey to high damage mages with lots of kill potential so you have to be careful for that and you also need to look out for junglers that have very strong ganks because sometimes your stun just won't be enough to save you. I wouldn't recommend picking Vega against champions that have high burst damage and high mobility. For example, LeBlanc. Vega struggles very hard against LeBlanc because early on she'll out damage you and she'll be able to zone you from creeps. So be very careful for this matchup. And there are a number of other matchups as well that you want to avoid. There are some that are hit and miss, for example, Ari. As a Vega, you can either dominate an Ari or you can get dominated. So I think the best thing for you to do is just play Vigar as much as you can and find the best matchups. But I feel, without a doubt, the worst matchup for Vigar would be Fizz. He has two mobility spells that he can use to dodge your stun, as well as an E that he can use to dodge your ultimate and your deathfire grasp, and he can also use it to jump out of your stun. He also is very aggressive and deals a lot of damage, so it's going to kill you quite a lot. So if you see a Fizz on the enemy team, stay away from Vigar. On Vigar, you will always max your Q first. It is your most reliable source of damage in the early game, as your W is very hard to land. It will also make it easier to last hit with the ability, giving you more ability power for the late game. However, after this point, you can vary situationally between maxing your W or maxing your E. I would always recommend putting at least two or three points into your E early on, because it will make the stun last longer, which makes it easier to land your W, as well as makes it easier to avoid ganks. Your W takes 1.2 seconds to load up, and a level 1 stun does not last this long, so you need to put at least two points into the stun. However, if you want to max W first, then by all means, because it will give you a much higher damage output um, against the mid laner once you have the two points in E and a high level W, but I would always recommend putting at least two points in your E, and maxing E first over W is actually also a good idea if you're being ganked a lot, because you'll be able to stun both the enemy mid laner and the jungler, and then get to safety. You also want to put a point into your ultimate every time it is available. So to conclude, you'll always start with boots and three health potions, build a cage's lucky pick early on, and build either two Doran's rings, a chalice of harmony, or more gold for ten items. You will then build a deathfire grasp in the mid game, as well as a rabadon's death cap, and build situationally late game, normally buying a void staff along the road. You always want to max your Q first, followed by either your W or your E, depending on whether you want to play safe or do the maximum amount of damage. Your combo goes Stun, W, Deathfire Grasp, Ultimate and Q, in that, in that order. You want to pick Vigar against lanes that are squishy, lack mobility and have a low kill potential. And avoid picking Vigar against lanes such as LeBlanc, Fizz, Annie or anyone else with high burst or high mobility. And uh, that's all for my Vigar guide. Thanks for watching if you did manage to watch all the way to the end. Subscribe for more similar content and some guides on other champions that I will be releasing at some point. Um, thanks for watching and goodbye.